Hiya, and welcome to Swing 101. My name is Binidi, and you can find me on DeviantArt under the same name. If you have further questions or want to know anything I didn't cover or want to send me cute pictures of cats. <laughs> um, if you have any questions, ask right away. I probably won't know what I said 30 seconds ago. <laughs> uh, alrighty, the art of sewing. You step a needle into fabric until it looks good. Yeah. Can you do I'm trying to. <laughs> <laughs> um, also, you need some thread, so um, it holds together any, uh, everything afterwards. Um, there are... That, 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 that. Yeah. The options for punching holes into fabric <laughs> are sewing by hand, sewing with an overlock machine, and sewing with a sewing machine. Last year I said that you need a sewing machine if you want to get stuff done in a reasonable amount, amount of time. I stand by that. But it's always good to know some basics hand sewing. Also, I'm able to learn, and I discovered over time, that your garments can look so much neater if you do more by hand. The most basic stitches are running stitch for basting, back stitch, whip stitch for seams, and the leather stitch for finishing touches. I highly recommend you to get your hands on a book to look them up and practice them a bit. I won't go that much into detail. <laughs> um, yeah, it's always uh, good to have some hand sewing skills for tricky parts a sewing machine can't read or if you are not that sure yet or if, a, if sewing is a hobby for you and you don't want to invest too much money too early on. Um, yeah, the next tier, if you will, is a sewing machine. You can get a sewing machine for around 100 bucks or less if you buy one second hand or steal one from a family or friend. <laughs> uh, yeah, okay, um, don't steal, it gets you bad karma and jail time. Um, Great, I lost, my, I lost my thread. Uh, yeah, you should uh, take care that your sewing machine has some adjustable stitches for a straight running stitch, the length of the stitch, and for the zigzag stitch, the uh, width and length of the stitch because you always uh, need different things. It's, it's just easier. Uh, the third part, the third of the bunch, is a overlock machine, which is just a fancy sewing machine, uh, the thing at the bottom there. Um, this, an overlock machine can sew, cut, and hem at the same time. And they are great if you work a lot with a stretchy knit fabric like jersey. But they are also only kind of worth the money if you work a lot with a stretchy knit fabric like jersey. Because um, they uh, sew, cut, and hem at the same time, so you can really uh, get creative on an overlock machine. Um, yeah. They exist. <laughs> and the next chapter is uh, threads, yarn. Find a brand that works for you and your sewing technique of choice. Um, my sewing machine, for example, hates a special kind of thread with a passion. It jams, tangles, and tears up everything apart as soon as I start working. My friend's machine, whom I gifted the spool of yarn to, has no problems whatsoever, and I have no idea why. 
Uh, there is a rather broad variety of yarn to choose from, natural fibers like cotton or silk or synthetic fibers, spun to yarn in different qualities and diameters. Color is also a factor if you, uh, yeah, usually you may want to match the color of your yarn with the color of your fabric. You will be working with. Uh, if such a color is not available, choose rather a slightly darker color than a light, slightly lighter one. Uh, for your seams will be less noticeable. If you work with multicolored patterns, choose the most dominant color or the darkest color. Or go wild and use a yarn color to complement the fabric if you want some decorative stitching. Uh, fabric. The two main attributes of uh, fabric are fibers and weave. Fibers are the material the fabric is made of, and weave is how the fibers are put together. Um, synthetic fibers like polyester, um, lycra, or minky. Hello. Uh, um, made in a lab usually. Um, they are usually quite crinkle free, very versatile and durable. But also not that breathable. So wearing them might not be extremely comfortable over, t over a long period of time and can be difficult to dye. Uh, natural fibers, on the other hand, come from plants and animals, uh, like uh, cotton, linen, uh, linen or wool. Uh, they are easy to dye, breathable and absorbent, but they crinkle easier, and especially animal fibers can become quite expensive, like sheep wool or silk. Yeah. Um, more often than not, you won't encounter synthetic fabrics or natural fabrics in pure form. For whatever reason, the industry loves to mix uh, fabrics or materials, um, like uh, uh, three to five percent of elastane into cotton fabric for a nice feel or an even wilder mix of cotton and wool and 5% of cashmere to push the price. Um, the, the composition of your fabric of choice should be written somewhere on the roll of fabric in the store. I highly recommend you to memorize the composition of your fabric or even write it down somewhere because the, uh, this will be later part of your washing instructions. Because, for example, um, if you wash minky fabric too hot, it may damage the uh, fur beyond repair, because minky is made of polyester, it's plastic, and heat is not always uh, that great of a combo. Um, yeah. What if you don't know what kind of fabric you're working <laughs> with? Um, my hometown has a lovely fabric market each year. Each vendor sets up their table somewhere in the pedestrian area for a weekend, and we fight to the death for the prettiest fabrics. Mm -hmm. A lovely event with a nice flea market flair. Uh, the only downside is that the fabric is pre-cut and often just has a price tag. Uh, so we, how do you determine, determine the material if you don't bought something obvious like bathing suit, ease, bandex? Um, the easy answer is you burn it. Uh, now, for your little uh, pyromaniacs at home, because I know this is being recorded, um, don't burn much. Uh, two times two centimeters square is more than enough. 
work in a safe and fireproof environment, keep an adult nearby, adult nearby and something to put the flames out if <clears throat> something even goes remotely wrong. All right, okay, yeah. <laughs> Uh, also, burn the sample after you bought it. <laughs> Shop clerics will be ecstatic if you damage the goods they are trying to sell. <clears throat> um, but yeah, burn a tiny piece uh, of fabric you want to learn more about. The quality and color of the flame the ashes and the smell can all tell you different things. I'm sure of it. Um, but I ain't no chemist or textile engineer. My rule of thumb is uh, if it smells like burnt hair, it's animal fiber. Burnt paper for plant fibers and burnt plastic for everything else. Uh, it didn't work so far and I didn't ruin anything. Yay for me. <laughs> Um, the other big attribute of fabric is the weave. So how is the fabric put together? The woven fabric on the left side has a kind of crisscross pattern um, um, and a minimal stretch, except when the material is something stretchy, again like spandex and are often used for structured garments like jackets or shirt, shirts. <clears throat> Everywhere the pattern mat uh, matters and wants to be shown off, like jackets, yeah. Mm, they are, in my honest opinion, the easier kind to work with as a beginner because they don't stretch that much. Just plain as it is. Um, uh, knit fabrics on the right are made of a single loopy thread. Think of socks, a granny's knit, for example. Um, they can stretch in two or four ways and are used for non structured uh, clothing. Imagine a t shirt made of knit jersey, uh, that's t shirt fabric. Um, you take two pieces of fabric, slap them together, and put them on, and will, it will somehow fit. Yeah. If you try the same with a uh, woven fabric, it won't be pretty. Um, there are a metric ton of different fabrics and combinations out there. Um, and every combination imaginable. Uh, cotton brocade, polyester velvet, silk chiffon. Some months ago, I stumbled upon a fabric made out of cork, like the bark of a tree. I have no idea how much chemistry went into it to make it flexible, but it seemed pretty cool. Yeah. Um. <laughs> Exotic things exist. Uh, uh, yeah, um, what you should keep in mind is that a stretchy fabric needs a stretchy stitch. Um, if your fabric can stretch in a certain direction, but your seams cannot, the tension will snap them. Maybe instantly, maybe over time. Um, so instead of a straight stitch, use a zigzag stitch to give the fabric a bit more wiggle room, because wiggly fabric likes their wiggle room. <laughs> um, I have some fabric samples I'd like to give around to give you an idea what kind of fabric exists. Well, well, okay, the most are polyester and cotton, because they're cheap. Um, but you could maybe imagine what you could do with these fabrics if you had more of them, or maybe a different color. Touch them, feel them, try to guess uh, what materials they are made of. Uh, yeah, samples. Um, the 
next item on the list are needles. Sewing needles come in all forms and sizes. What kind of needle you need is dictated by the fabric you want to use. For most purposes, a universal needle should be A-OK, -okay, hence the name universal. Um, as a rule of thumb, the thicker the fabric, the thicker your needle should be. Um, or the other way around, don't use a fat needle for fine fabrics, because the hole you will punch will be unnecessarily large. For thick fabric, use a fat needle, uh, yeah, thick fabric, thick uh, fat needle. Um, for uh, thick, thick fabrics, yeah, fat needle or uh, a lot of layers, a fat needle. Um, because a thinner one might snap. Which is okay, needles do snap, they are an item of usage. Replace them from time to time, but uh, yeah, adjust your needle to the project you're working on. Um, leather has a special kind of needle with teensy tiny blades at the top to ease their way through the fabric. Um, it's, it's cool. Uh, Knit fabric also has a special kind of needle because um, you don't want to manage, damage the threads in fear of ladders. Uh, Laufmaschen? So, uh, think of uh, an unraveling knit sock. The more you pull on it, on a damaged thread, the uh, less sock you will have. Because, again, it's a there, it's a single loopy thread, and it will start to unravel. Um, nah. Nah. Um. Uh, yeah, knit fabrics have their special kind of needle. Uh, they are labeled as stretch needles or jersey needles and they are not as sharp. They have kind of a ballpoint tip to push the uh, threads aside instead of piercing through them. It will damage the fabric less and um, could expand the lifespan of your garment in the long run. Long run. Mm -hmm. Yeah, as already said, items, uh, needles are an item of utility. They wear down over time. On the left side, you have a needle right out of the package. In the middle, a needle after some uses, and the right one should be replaced. <laughs> um, these hooks and crannies you see there um, can tear and rip at your fabric and pull single threads out and can shred them, literally. If you use a finer fabric like some uh, silk chiffon or something with a very high and dense uh, thread count, something lightweight, it will just shred it. Um, my granny always said, uh, for each new project, a new needle. But she also worked with a lot of uh, lightweight syn synthetic fibers, so do what feels right to you, okay? <laughs> uh, if you only work uh, small amounts of time, so don't do that much, you don't have to change your needles that regularly. If you sew a lot, maybe change them more often to reduce shredding. <laughs> um, Okay, these were the basic infos. What do you need to start? Uh, yeah, <coughs> depends on what you want to do, really. Hello. <laughs> um, you will need some needles and thread in whatever configuration works for you. Um, Pins can make your life a lot easier. 
Um, you can just pin your fabric into place uh, to stop it from shifting around. Um, pin cushions like the cute cactus over there. To store your needles, you don't need immediately. Also, they are a great first sewing project because you always need a pin cushion. Um, or some kind of pegs or clips to hold your fabric in place if you don't feel like stabbing your fabric that day or don't want to step, step it more than necessary. I once worked with a fabric uh, that remembered every hole I punched into it, no matter how much I rubbed on it or uh, tried to ease the hole into the... <laughs> didn't work, so these uh, pegs can help a lot. Scissors. Working with a dull pair of scissors is a pain in the butt. Um, it, don't, uh, it doesn't have to be a special fabric scissors, because they do exist. A normal pair of scissors can do the job just fine. Just take care that they are sharp on you. Um, also, these pizza cutter-like uh, tools seem to be en vogue at the moment. Um, they give you very exact and straight lines. If you work with quilting, also do some uh, blankets with, a, with a, a lot of geometric patterns, that could be something for you, these pizza cutters. But I really like the sound of a nice sharp pair of scissors tearing through fabric and you won't get that sound with, a, uh, with these pizza cutters. Um, but again, do what feels right. <laughs> uh, a measuring tape for measuring tape and other things. Yeah. You will need a measuring tape at some point or another. <laughs> a tailor's chart for marking things on your fabric. If you transfer the pattern onto your fabric or want to mark, want to mark something, for example, where the zipper should go or any alterations, use some kind of designated fabric marking tool. Could be a tailor's chalk. chalk could be, I've seen some markers that are uh, um, not waterproof or can be washed away or uh, I think they weren't heat resistant so if you iron them flat they will disappear um, but don't use um, markers or felt tips you use for normal everyday writing um, because they are not water resistant and if you wash your finished clothes, the color may bleed out and stain your clothes. And you don't want that, I guess. Um, thimbles. Um, a giant misconception. Thimbles don't protect your fingers from being poked. Um, you put them on the finger you, you, you use to push the needle through the fabric so the needle doesn't push into your finger again and again and um, it will shred your fingers a lot over time. Um, yeah, needle uh, thimbles. They also come in a lot of very cute variations like painted, so they can be quite artsy but a uh, normal leather or metal one can do the job just fine. <laughs> uh, last but not least, a flat iron or iron, iron, bügeleisen. <laughs> um, it sounds like a housewife thing to say, but your garments can look better and you can work much more precise if you iron your seams and generally your, f uh, your fabric flat. 
because it pushes your accuracy to the next level and can make the difference between the question, did you make this yourself? And the question, where did you buy this? <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> uh. Okay, the, ah, no. um, the last big one, patterns. Patterns tell you in what pattern you should cut and sew to get the thing you want. The internet is a great. Did I switch? Yeah. Um, the internet is a great starting point if you want to buy a pattern. If you are a fan of buying things analog, um, look in department stores. They often have a shelf with pattern packages or pre packaged patterns. Um, as a rule of thumb, every department store that has fabric also should have a shelf with patterns like Karstadt or so. Um, also um, fabric stores. I know some fabric stores around my town and they struggle a lot with the internet sell system stuff um, by analog. But, um, support these ladies, they can va give valuable tips and uh, support you. Yo. <laughs> um, also, there are some magazines you can buy that contain patterns. Uh, yeah, Vogue sounds scary, but it, it, they're just patterns. If you see something in a magazine you like, buy the magazine and copy the uh, pattern for your personal use. Um, they come out monthly, yearly, whatever. It's, it also makes sure that your uh, clothes are up to date, style-wise. <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, another way to get patterns are copying your wardrobe. So the clothes you already have. Uh, if you, for example, uh, take a t-shirt, you can trace around, uh, lay it flat and trace around the seams at the front and the back and the sleeves. This has the uh, advantage that the t-shirts you use that way are already your size. That means the clothes you will make will fit you. Yeah an advantage. Mm. Okay, practical use. Uh, we see here some um, non-descriptive pony girl. Um, how I'd deconstruct Shimi's outfit is, um, yeah, she, she wears some, some kind of uh, tunic or dress. I don't like the uh, jeans and dress combo that much, so I'd interpret it as a tunic. Um, I've put a second tunic underneath for a bit more um, volume. Um, yeah. You can start by uh, taking a t-shirt and elongate it to uh, get a more yeah, longer garment for more tunic style. <clears throat> um, paint a pair of leggings and some cowboy boots and should be ready to go. Um, but if you want to do something more elaborate, like uh, AJ's uh, gala gown, I'm taking the Equestria Girls uh, pictures because pony pictures, you have to do some um, artistic, uh, you have to take some artistic freedom to, to convert a pony dress into a human dress. And I'm not that, art and I'm not that artistic. <laughs> 
Um, yeah, if you want to do something more elaborate, um, I would first look for a similar pattern you could use. You can always alter everything until it fits you, but it's easier to start with a base than doing everything from scratch. It saves you time and materials if you have to try and error your way to your clothes, to your uh, garment. Um, I found this pattern online, it's by Borda, it's from I think 2012, quite old, available for four bucks online. Um, the technical drawing on the bottom seems fitting and the model looks happy, um, so we'll take it. Um, these are the parts for the upper half of the dress. You see on the very left side the back, then yeah, it goes from back to front with the uh, right piece being the center part. Um, and you uh, flip these again to have the other half of the top garment, the top piece. Um, I'd highly recommend you to do a mock-up of this top first to look if it fits you, if you need to make any alterations because, for example, a si an Asian size 35 can vastly differ from, from an European size uh, 36 because they have uh, different uh, body types, body structures. It, it's just a given kind of. I should talk more into the microphone. Um, yeah. Um, I'll do the alterations on the pattern, kind of freehand, um, but doing them on the uh, mock-up on a piece of, uh, yeah, pieces might, might be an under, uh, understatement, but uh, use some cheap fabric that is similar to the uh, fabric you will use on the end, on the finished garment. For example, um, AJ looks, uh, AJ's dress is blue. Um, cotton is easy to uh, work with, and um, AJ is a country girl, so maybe jeans jeans fabric for her dress, so I use some uh, masseline, nessel, nessel uh, tuch in German, with some, some cheap, non-stretchy woven fabric as a mock-up. And I do alterations also on the mock-up while wearing, so I can paint directly what I want to alter. It goes easier if you have a friend to help you, but I don't have friends. Um, yes. Uh, so personally, I find, uh, eh, good, wrong order. Um, so we see here AJ's dress kind of uh, the, the skirt starts in the waist instead of the hip like on the model Taille statt Hüfte so we should shorten the top part to make it more like the original mm. Also, I find a sweetheart neckline more appealing or flattering than a straight one. It isn't shown in the original dress. It seems to be a straight neckline, but I find a sweetheart necklace more pretty, prettier, so we'll use that too. Um, yeah, these are, are the changes I would make if I made that dress. Uh, so we'll take them and uh, put them, übertragen, put them on the uh, final fabric, cut everything out, um, 
read the instructions. Every pattern comes with instructions in what order you should sew the pieces together. Also instructions about uh, what fabric you could use to get the uh, desired garment. Uh, instructions what you need, for example, a zipper or a lining or some padding. Um, yeah, follow the instructions if they are well made. Uh, yeah, sew everything together. The uh, pattern from Border has an option for a. <laughs> has an option for a um, shoulder-free address, the one in the middle. Uh, luckily, AJ is also shoulderless, this address is. Um, but you would need some kind of corsage or corsette to uh, hold everything in place. It's kind of difficult to put a boning for a corset into a uh, top if you've never done it before. I suggest you to um, drop the corset boning and just add some cute spaghetti straps. It's easier and no one will hunt you down if it isn't 100% true to the original. Ah, uh, yes. That was the top part for the skirt part. Um, AJ's dress has kind of a bell shape. We could try to imitate it with a kind of balloon style skirt. So you take uh, two layers of uh, fabric skirt and ruffle the outer uh, fabric up until it looks like, uh, like a little balloon. It's cute, but isn't that great for transportation. So if you want to wear it at a dress, at a uh, convention, maybe not your first uh, skirt of choice. Um, a circle skirt or half circle skirt is also an option where you just take a big circle of fabric, cut a hole in the middle, and then put it on with the hole uh, as your waist part. Um, but it will give you a rather A-shaped, like, like an A and uh, not, not these uh, balloon bell-shaped dress skirt you, uh, you see there. Um, but I think the easiest option is a gathered skirt. Um, measure your waist, uh, multiply it by at least two. The more, the better. But it's also a uh, it also depends on how much money you want to spend. Uh, you, uh, for like, it's a difference if you use uh, three or five meters for gathered skirt, uh, meters of fabric. Um, yeah, multiply uh, your waist by at least two for some nice poof to uh, gather it. And, uh, or guesstimate based on the apple pattern. Um, maybe 10 centimeters for one arc, uh, so, yeah, okay, um, 12 arcs for uh, the skirt, so maybe 1.2 meters, um, which is exactly two times your waist if you uh, got a model if you got model me measurements of 90, 60, 90. Um, for, uh, the, the length should be your knee length. Uh, I, know it's, I know it's boring, but it's uh, kind of important. Um, yeah. 
Um, if, if you got your piece of fabric, uh, just gather the uh, top edge, uh, ruffle it up a bit until it um, is your waist uh, circumference and then just sew it down. So you have some uh, nice ruffles and a bit of proof in your uh, skirt. Um, important with AJ's skirt, I think, is you would need an underskirt. So do the same thing uh, with a gathered skirt, but more in a petticoat styled uh, skirt. Put it underneath to get even more volume into the skirt. Um, your last step would be uh, decorating the dress with uh, uh, maybe some uh, what is it called? Uh, bias tape or a schräg band to make the edges nice and uh, a bit colored maybe for a bit of uh, to make it look more interesting. <laughs> Um, or apply the apples on AJ's dress with um, a pleak, which brings me to my last point. Yeah, okay, that was the underskirt, thank you. Um, it's an underskirt. <laughs> uh, which brings me to my last point, a pleak, uh, which is probably the only interesting part of this panel for you people who wanted to learn something useful for plushie making. Um, thank you for making your bottom not too obvious. Um, no example, I would cut the apples out of red fabric, uh, sew the patches into places and then into place and then set a zigzag stitch on my sewing machine to minimal length and like maybe two or three millimeters to hide the raw edges of the uh, red apple patch under the zigzag stitch. Now, so you just, um, you have your red patch and the uh, jeans fabric and you sew the apple onto the jeans fabric with the raw edges, the cut edges, where you cut them and just hide them under a very broad zigzag stitch. That's kind of a pleak. Um, yes. You can also use a pleak on a plushies, for example, for the eyes. This is a plush by Firefly Twinkle Toes. Extremely cute. And as far as I know, she doesn't do the eyes by, uh, with embroidery. Uh, she just uses different colored uh, pieces of fabric and stacks them onto each other and uh, sew them into place. It can, uh, is it really visible on the presentation? You can see on the uh, edges of the blue iris uh, the zigzag stitch. Bits, I hope. Uh, maybe. Yes. Is that zigzag stitch made by a sewing machine? Yeah. Okay. You can also do it uh, by hand, of course. Um, a sewing machine is just less time consuming. <laughs> um, uh, another plush by uh, Caluseri AC. Uh, you see here on the eyeshadow of Sonambula, um, she used the applique technique to um, put the eyeshadow on, so it's still plush, but it's another uh, color of plush. Um, again, the edges hidden under the uh, under the uh, zigzag <coughs> stitch. And also uh, the embroidered, embroidered eye underneath. Um, which is also the uh, most commonly used uh, technique for plushy eyes, I guess. 
um, again you can do embroidery by hand but I, f I personally find it quite tedious um, but maybe an option because okay thank you um, because uh, uh, embroidery machines can also only do embroidery and uh, yeah they, they yeah embroidery machines only can do embroidery and sewing machines that can also do embroidery uh, start at around 800 bucks so really not that beginner friendly mm. especially if you aren't sure yet uh, if you want to dive deeper into this hobby um, also for embroidery machine embroidery you will need some embroidery files that tell the uh, embroidery machine what to do. Uh, embroidery thread is a bit smoother than a normal sewing thread and uh, stabilizer, you need some stabilizer. Um, stabilizer, like the name suggests, uh, stabilizes your fabric, which means you uh, your fabric has less wiggle room. Do I have a? Yeah, this is an embroidery machine, thank you. Um, these, these are uh, embroidery hoops where you put your fabric in and then put these onto the sewing mach uh, embroidery machine. Um, the right hoop is for hand embroidery. Uh, yeah, embroidery machine. Um, Stabilizing your fabric means uh, your fabric has less wiggle room to stretch in any undesired directions, which could ruin your embroidered picture. Um, if you work with Minky, for example, use at least two layers of um, a stabilizer, one at the bottom to stop uh, the, uh, the Minky from wiggling around, then the Minky and some kind of uh, water soluble uh, stabilizer on top to keep the fur in check. Um, make sure that the uh, tension in your embroidery hoop is acceptable. Um, if you can tap on it like on a drum, um, it should be a-okay. Um, but yeah, that is everything on my side. Do you have questions? Yes. <laughs> test, test. Okay. Hello. Hey. Um, I have a question concerning um, the um, leather needle you mentioned earlier. Um, oh, earlier you yeah. said that leather needs a special kind of needle. Yep. Does it also need a special kind of fiber or thread to be sewn together, just because I imagine leather to be rather heavy and stuff? Yeah, um, heavy duty thread exists. Um, it's thicker and I think it's... Oh boy, um, I think it's made of cotton, of course, a, a synthetic fiber are everywhere, uh, yeah, uh, heavy duty threads. They are labeled as such, labeled okay. as such. Okay, thanks. <laughs> yes? At, one point, at what point of the process do you wash the fabric because um, of shrinking and everything? Uh, yeah, sure. Um, if you plan on wearing the fabric multiple times or if you want to um, yeah, if you want to do uh, clothes, wash them beforehand because the uh, synthetic fibers don't shrink that much, but um, natural fibers can shrink quite a lot. For example, if you uh, wash wool, it can shrink for about 20% in worst cases. And uh, if you cut your fabric and sew it together and you have your nice piece of 
garments and then you wash it and it's suddenly Barbie sized doll um, would be yeah not that great yeah wash uh, your fabric beforehand if you plan on wearing the fabric um, I, I'm not sure how, uh, um, about minky fabric because uh, washing uh, the Fur, in my experience, uh, doesn't do any good to it. Of course, you should wash it, um, but maybe not in a washing machine, but not um, hand washing. Uh, yeah, to, to do uh, as less damage as possible. What kind of fabric would you recommend for making a plushie filled with stuffed wool? And what would you recommend if you want to make a little doll or um, figurine filled with sand? Uh, a figurine of what? You know, when you have a little doll and it's filled with sand, like, you sand. know, these balls that you can, you know, always squish around for stress okay. relief, it's filled with sand. And you could make that in a little pony form as well. Um. It sounds definitely cool. Uh, first off, uh, second, uh, I'd use anything you'd, uh, I'd, I wonder I w would uh, want to use. I think I mean you you probably would need some kind of uh, bag to contain the sand so it doesn't spill out. So you would use two fabrics: one to hold in the sand and one At on least, top. At least, yeah. Okay, and for a normal plushie. A normal plushie. Um, if you're just starting out with plushie making, I would maybe use uh, fleece fabric. It's, it has kind of the stretch pro um, properties of minky, but isn't as expensive. Um, minky fabric starts around 16 bucks a meter, which is kind of a lot. Um, and, and fleece fabric hangs around five bucks a meter, so it's, it's cheaper and um, it isn't as uh, infuriating if you make mistakes and your plushie doesn't turn out to be uh, as spectacular as you wanted it to be, <laughs> uh, maybe. Okay, um, thank you. Okay, uh, one question uh, back to, to washing. Uh, so some people say, okay, uh, or I mean, usually people say, uh, don't wash that in a washing machine, uh, wash it by hand. What about uh, programs in washing machines for, for, to simulate hand washing? Are these uh, also okay, or is there a problem with them? Um, I don't trust my washing machine personally. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, I, th I think if it's, um, labeled as uh, only hand wash maybe around 30 degrees and with as less um, umdrehungen turnings as possible <coughs> um, rotations. rotations yeah thank you um, maybe for extra protection put it into a um, washing bag mm -hmm. or something with these net yeah. thingies um, yeah but um, I personally Okay, um, if it says hand wash, I'll probably soak it into my bathtub. <laughs> Sorry, I couldn't help you. Uh, hello, I Hi. wanted to ask of if you have some tips, uh, if you want to sew very thin stripes of fabric together. Okay, that sounds tedious. Um, Thin, thin stripes, like um, ribbons sewn together, or okay. Okay, so like a, a, diff, a decorative stripe consisting of smaller stripes. Okay. Um, I use uh, first off. I would uh, hem the stripes before I uh, sew them together in any way. 
uh, about hem them to, as uh, um, you have the edges of fabric and they like to fray if they are woven. So the um, the fasern lösen sich halt auf. No? It, it frays. Um, to prevent that, I would use a zigzag stitch to hold them together. Um, use stripes that are bigger than the final stripe for the hem allowance. Um, yeah, and then I'd probably pin them into place and just sew them together. <laughs> um, yeah. Hello. Um, Hi. So uh, I kind of have a two-in-one question. Um, you mentioned before that uh, many fabrics are uh, mixed fabrics, like mm -hmm. uh, synthetic fiber and natural fiber. Mm -hmm. um, would you say there, or, uh, would you say uh, um, like non-mixed fibers are? Better or is mixed fiber better or what? Um, what would you say about it, that? It, it depends. It's uh, a cost factor. If you throw some cashmere or silk into your mix, it will cost more, hmm. but less than a pure silk fabric. Um, it's, it's, um, if the the uh, fiber. The material is maybe not that, mu that much of a factor in uh, what's better, what wor what's worse, but more what's fitting for what kind of thing I want to make or what feels nicer to me. Because if you make a, a piece of clothing, you will have to wear it. And if you think it itches like heck, uh, that isn't really a matter of uh, the uh, mix of uh, material, but more like a, a personal preference. So, um, yeah, um, but um, yeah, personal, so you, personal preference. So you'd say it just it just depends on the on the project, because that's yeah. what my the second part would be like. Is is there a, a fabric that fits everything, or? Would you um, rather say you really need to look for what you're doing and then chose your fabric? Um, cotton suede, uh, su suede, su suede, S U E D E in uh, English. Uh, that's like the plainest and most boring cotton fabric you can find, but it fits for everything and is super versatile. Hmm. Um, If you're starting out, it's uh, easy to handle and not that expensive. Um, but if you're searching for something more special... <laughs> it depends. <laughs> yeah. All right, thanks. Any more questions? Did you learn something today? Yes. Okay. Then I was successful. Thank you for watching. Uh, thank you for listening. Um, have fun at the auction and whatever panel is after me, um, after mine. Um, yeah. Thank you. <laughs>